The first new feature is the movement of the navigation pane in Outlook to the upper left right here. And this now matches the web version of Outlook. So you have all of your apps here. I've got mail, calendar, and people, tasks, and also to do. So now to do is integrated right here. So I have all my to do app tasks here. Then there's org chart, which is kind of nice. You can browse the org chart and then an app launcher right here. So if I want to launch an app like OneNote, for example, there we go, a little TPS report. Now there are some other options I can configure. So if I want to right click here and say move up, I can move it like this, or I can drag drop and reorder things like that. Other things on the calendar, I can have the peak on hover. So by default, if I hover here, I can get a peek at my calendar, but I can say don't show the peak, or I can choose options, which will actually pull up my calendar options directly. Then you can pin app. So if I click here, certain things like, let's say I want to have my shortcuts. Here are all the shortcuts that I have. I can right click and say pin. Now that'll always stay there. I could also do something like notes or folders. So I'll add folders and I'll pin this as well. The second new feature is message reactions. This makes it really easy to give a reaction to a mail instead of replying all the time. So instead of doing a reply all to this message to Bill Lumberg about the new TPS report cover sheets, instead there's a little smiley face. I can click that and give it a little heart because I love the TPS report cover sheets and everyone else can react just like that. So now I don't have to flood everyone's email. Here's another one. I'll need you to come in on a Saturday. I got it, Bill. I'm going to give that one a thumbs up. Now on the other side, the people who send these messages, you can find all the notifications. If you hit the notification bell, this is where they will show up. I don't have any notifications right now, but if I was getting thumbs up and hearts to my messages, they would all show up in my notifications bar. The third new feature is improved Teams integration with Outlook. I have a mail here from Bill Lumberg, and over on the right hand side, you'll see this new button, the little Teams icon. If I click this, I have some options. I can share to Teams with a single click. And I can put exactly where I want to share it to. Maybe I want to go to this channel or that channel. And I can send this entire mail directly to Teams. Some other options include just schedule a meeting with these three folks. So if I click this, it pops up a new meeting. It is scheduled to send to all these four people from the mail. And it even is a Teams meeting automatically. And the last couple options, if I click this, I can chat with the group right here with a single click. And it sets a chat message up with all the people, or I can chat directly with Bill Lumberg right from this menu here. And we can talk about those TPS reports. The fourth new feature is improvements to Outlook dictation. There are big updates to the user experience, and there are new commands that you can use, and I'll show all these things. So I have a message here from Bill Lumberg. I will hit reply, and you'll see the dictate button. That's already been there, but now when I click it, you'll see the new experience. I'm so excited about the new TPS report cover sheets. Bold that, period. I really can't wait to come in on Saturday and get all updated with my cover sheet design. Delete that. I'm super excited to come in on Saturday to work on the new TPS report cover sheet designs, period. And I'll turn off dictate. So you saw a couple of the updates where I said bold that or delete something. I'll move up the UI. You can drag this anywhere on the screen. If you go to settings, you'll see some new options. First, there are many different languages. You can scroll down. We've added over 20 new preview languages to dictation, and the total, I believe, is now over 40. The other nice thing is you can enable auto punctuation. So if I turn this on, now when I do some dictation, I'll do periods and question marks, and they'll automatically be added. So let's hit save, and we'll start again. I'm so excited to be coming in on Saturday to work with the team. Why is that, you might ask? Because you are such an amazing leader. So there are just a couple examples of auto-punctuate. The fifth new feature is roaming of settings in Outlook, including Outlook Desktop. I'm going to go to the File menu here, and then go down to Options at the bottom. There's a new option right here that says Cloud Storage. Store my Outlook settings in the cloud. So what this means is, all of your settings will be shared between Outlook apps. For example, under mail, one that I like is always make sure to check spelling before sending. If you have other customizations that you've added here, maybe under calendar, you say always shorten appointments and meetings less than one hour or one hour longer started a little bit later, those types of settings will now roam in the cloud. So when I have a new desktop and a new client, I'm bringing up a new machine, all my settings will already be set. The sixth new feature is a toggle to go from the single line ribbon to the classic view, which gives you more space. 
So if I go here in the upper right and I drop this little arrow down, I can choose classic ribbon here. Now you'll have the buttons squeezed in a little tighter. It's a little taller, but you can see more buttons all at once. So if I go to the view menu, you'll see similarly, things like immersive reader are easier to find now. Or if I go into calendar, it's similar. I have this expanded classic ribbon. And to go back, you just go to the upper right here and choose simplified ribbon. And it goes back to the default. The seventh new feature is calendar time scale. I'm gonna to go to the calendar here and I'll go to view. And there's a new time scale button. And this is similar to Outlook desktop. If I drop this down, the default is 30 minutes. But if I wanna make a little more compact, I have 60 minutes. Now each of these units right here is one hour. Or if I wanna widen it out, I can make 15 minute increments. So now they all seem a little bit taller, even going to 10 minutes or even five minutes. So lots of different options for your time scale. The eighth new feature is time zones in the calendar, also to match Outlook desktop. I will go to calendar settings here, and right here in calendar, if I scroll down a little bit, there's this time zone option, and this matches Outlook desktop. So in this case, I'm gonna add a time zone. Maybe I work with a different country, it's a totally different time zone, or a different part of the United States. So I will search for Delhi in India. Let's add this, and I can show in the calendar. I can even add another time zone. Let's go for Beijing. So I have two different time zones. I will hit save. Here are the three different time zones. So the one I'm in here, Pacific, UTC minus eight. If you click here, you can go with time zones and see which ones are which. So Pacific is UTC minus eight, India UTC plus 530, and China UTC plus eight. The ninth new feature is adding a global calendar. If I go to calendar settings, if I scroll down, I can go and find global calendar. We're gonna add a global calendar. And let's say that I want to have a calendar that is in a different type of date and time setup than Gregorian. For example, an English calendar is typically Gregorian. I'm going to go and I'm going to select a different one. Maybe I want to select the Hijri calendar and I can change the language. I will leave it as English, but if I want to hit save here and close, now my calendar is set to Hijri. So this is great if you want to be able to set your calendar easily to a different type. The tenth new feature is kind of a fun one and it's a charm you can add to your Outlook meetings. I'm gonna click new event here and we'll give it a title. And to the left, there's this little charm button. So I can add a little fun icon to the front of my event. So TPS report offsite generates a lot of love. We're gonna give a heart there and I'm gonna give Kara an invite and Alex. We'll choose a time and hit send. And you can see right here, there's a little TPS report offsite. It has the heart next to it. It's kind of a fun way to make sure that you can categorize and see different events if you wanna do that. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.